This is the Lifestyle Builders Podcast, show 79, when two become one in business and in life with Alexi Panos and Preston Smiles. It's a challenge because I would say because we're so type A and because we're both competitive and we both love to see what we're made of, when we came together, not just in partnership, but in business, it like escalated everything. Oh, man. <laughs> it's like, oh, dope. You're going to do that? I'm going to do that. Okay. You're going to build that? I'm going to build that. It's like, <laughs> and that's why we grew so quickly because we had this person next to us that was like, kept pushing the needle forward and we're like, yeah, okay, I'm going to push the needle forward. Oh, then I'm going to do it. Hi, Ariana here with a quick PSA about why this topic is so important to us. Tom and I know how challenging it can be to start and run a business, to take care of your loved ones, and on top of it all, to keep a healthy relationship with your spouse. It isn't easy, and that is why we created our Lifestyle Builders Mentorship Program. As a special offer during this very special Couples and Entrepreneurship Month, we'd like to invite you to get started with your first month of Lifestyle Builders for only $1. So if you, and your spouse is welcome too, need more strategy, support and guidance in your business and life, plus people who truly care about you and will keep you accountable, sign up now at tominariana.com slash lbcouples with the code lbcouples. A little bit more about our awesome guests on the show today. As the co-founders and co-creators of The Bridge Method, Alexi Panos and Preston Smiles have supported hundreds of thousands of people who have dramatically changed their lives by participating in their various programs and workshops all over the world. For the past 10 years, they've both dedicated their lives to learning as much as they could about human potential. They are insanely committed to leading others on this same path and empowering them to step fully into their unique gifts to create a world that works for everyone. This couple is truly committed to transforming the way the world works by transforming the lives of individuals. They currently speak and lead workshops all over the world, both together and separate, as well as run their own wildly successful empowerment platforms. Alexi, through her work with Soul School and her nonprofit Epic, and Preston in his work as a next generation thought leader. They are published authors, speakers, and now parents. All right, I don't know about you, but this interview was. <laughs> It, it really was like, mind blowing. Well, I was gonna say, you know, every time we, every, every time we talk to these guys, it, it just, I come away different, you know, because they're, they're this unique couple mm -hmm. where they're both the type A's and seeing them come together and play off each other. And just like, you can tell, and you guys will tell when you listen to the episode, how much they love and respect each other and how much work they've put into getting to where they are not only business-wise, but relationship-wise. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think one of the biggest things we talked about with them was the fact that they did have their own businesses and then they came together and created a business together while they were in a relationship together. But then how all of that changed when they became parents for the first time. Oh, yes. <laughs> and, you know, just, just them being open and honest about like it just, it's, Sometimes life is ugly, you know, sometimes you're, you're trying to deal with this person that you love and you respect, but you also are your own person and you have your own business and just kind of navigating all of those different little complexities and, and things that can easily throw off your relationship and how they've kind of used those to not only get to a better place in the relationship, but get to a better place as individuals as well. Yeah. I mean, so much gold in this episode. So with that, we'll let you guys dive in. Yeah. All right, you guys, we are back with Couples and Entrepreneurship. And today I am beyond excited to introduce our next two guests, Alexi Panos and Preston Smiles. Thank you guys so much for coming on the show. How are you doing? We're doing great. <laughs> we got the robot going on. I love it. A robot. Yeah, we're we're currently in the middle of sleep training our son, which is awesome for entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yes, yes, it is. I just did my sales calls in the garage while the <laughs> trash compactor was going by, and the gardeners were playing very loud Spanish music. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was gonna say every entrepreneur with kids has these stories. Like we have the ones of like our daughter coming down. We're doing like an interview or a call, and she like pops her head up in the background. Oh no, she did it live. 
on one of these interviews. Right, she did. So there's a show where she like she came out of the room she was in, and you, in the end of the episode, you just see her head pop up like right here, and like, <laughs> and then she goes back down the screen, and I'm like, all right, this is life. We're just we're gonna go with it, guys. <laughs> what happened? Yeah, for sure. I love but it. what I love about you guys is you have such an interesting dynamic in that you each have your own businesses and your own kind of stamp on the world, but then you also have a business together. So talk to me about that dynamic. Like what did that look like as you guys were building those and had that kind of relationship and the marriage was in the background? Yeah, it's interesting because, you know, when we met, we were both really, like, we were both at that point where we were fully dedicated to our personal work and what we were doing and really kind of at that beginner stage of our individual businesses. And, I mean, quite honestly, that was one of the things that attracted us to each other was how deeply in and on a mission we were because it's like, oh, this person's totally going to get my schedule. Perfect. (laughs) (laughs) They're not going to make me wrong for my work ethic fantastic. Um, And then it became this conversation of like, oh, we actually like really deeply love the same things. And we both bring such a different side to the game. Why not partner and see if there's some magic there? Because there was such great chemistry in the relationship that we thought it would translate in business. And it certainly has. And we've built our, our live workshops together and online training programs together. And all while maintaining these strong individual businesses. And, you know, even last night we were having a conversation about this. It's like all of that and making sure that we don't lose sight that the relationship comes first. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the most challenging thing that we find in our relationship and being coworkers and also having our own businesses, but also people that we coach as well. When they work together, that line gets so blurred. And a lot of people tend to lose their passion and their relationship and their normal humanness together as a couple to the workload and the to-do list and the things to check off and the ideas because all that can be exciting too. Yeah. 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 Well, and, and you know, that was something that, you know, we, this year we said our theme is going to be putting us first. Because we because sucked at it before. <laughs> the, the past several years had been building these businesses. Like we have three now, uh, raising these kids. We have two. And yeah. what we realized was that like we kind of lost a lot of us. And so I remember on a previous conversation, you guys had introduced us to um, Gottman's work. And so we started going through that and asking the questions. And so much of what we found was that really connecting back and getting the relationship to where it was before, now that we've both evolved now as parents and business owners, has then helped the business and everything else become so much easier. Totally. That's awesome. How great is Gottman's work, by the way? Really good. Yeah, very good. It helped. I'm not, I'm usually, I'm, I'm the downer here. I don't read personal <laughs> development books a lot, but like that one they just wrote it in a way that was really easy for me to get into, to like feel invested in and to understand it was very simple. Like here's what it was, here's what you do. And you just kind of, you do it the way that works for you. And so I really like, you know, kind of having that option to dive back into and say, Hey, let's just sit, let's just ask each other questions. Let's just talk through like, what do we want our lives to look like? What do we want our marriage to look like? And let's work at it. Because a lot of times it gets it gets left behind in the dust. It gets okay. Well, we got to take care of the kids first. Always, we got to take care of the house. We got to take care of the businesses. And yeah. it is so easy to let this person that is really important to you just kind of be like left on the shelf. Like, well, I know they're always going to be there for me, so oh. I don't have to worry about that. Well, that's the thing, right? It's this conversation of like, oh, they're good. We're committed to each other. They get it, so it's fine. <laughs> I'm going to be over here. And and this is exactly what we were talking about last night. Like when the hustle becomes the new uh, thing that we worship, you know, Mm -hmm. the the climb, the, the attention, like the money, the scaling, when that becomes the new thing that we worship, instead of putting that same amount of energy and effort into the relationship, because truthfully at the end of the day, like when I die, I know what's going to matter most to me is, is my connection to the people I love most. But right now that's hard to put in the Mm -hmm. forefront. You know, so, yeah, we're, we're in that same conversation for sure. And, yeah, go ahead. And, <laughs> and each, each generation 
is here to evolve past what our parents did mm -hmm. and what their parents did. And when I look at how much my mom and dad worked and how, you know, they say that I was born in 1980, that our generation, which I think you guys are in that same ballpark, 84, the mm -hmm. least, least parented generation in like a hundred years. Like we were outside, nobody, <laughs> like there was no fear of us being kidnapped yeah. or anything like that. Like we were gone, right? <laughs> In some ways, that was awesome because we were deeply independent. In other ways, I see how that has screwed some people up. And so as much as all of that is a conversation, as entrepreneurs in a relationship, you know, uh, we were talking about this somewhere. I was saying how, you know, Alexi and I have been together. How many years have we been together? Five. Going on five years. <laughs> and out of those five years, how many days are in a year? 365. 365 days in a year. We have maybe been apart out of 365 days in a year. Five years straight, we have maybe been apart for the longest, what would you say, 10 days? 10 days. Like, we're, and not just like apart, we're always like a few feet from each other. <laughs> but, no, right? Or down the street at a coffee shop. <laughs> and, and then our, now that we have a child, it's kind of the same thing. And Yes, there's a difference between being in the same room and being present. And we spend a lot of time together. We play. We travel all over the world. And everywhere we go, we do stuff that's fun for us. Now, as individuals, we both have different worldviews and paradigms and work ethics and how we receive those things. Everybody is prone to different stress levels mm -hmm. with the same workload. And so both of us are working out even as we speak what that looks like to have a workload and to relieve oneself of the idea that, you know, um, or to hold that in a way that has one stressed out because it is our duty as husbands, wives, fathers, uh, and mothers to make sure that our cup is full. And I, I think that anybody listening, like, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a lot. And the most important part of this whole thing to me is like, Am I making sure that I'm taking care of my own personal needs? Am I making sure that I am not so wound up and stressed out that I'm a fucking terrible mother or and, uh, business, owner. and business owner and everything else and father and all that stuff? So I just want to yeah. put that. And so with that, I'm curious because Ariana and I were, were very similar before we got into business. And then as we got into business, it was basically me that started it and her that was like, I want nothing to do with this. <laughs> and eventually she got pulled in. But for you guys, you both had your own business. And I think you guys are both more type A, more out front. So as you came together and did this business together, as you're coming together now as parents, how do you guys figure out the roles you play and how you don't get things so wound up because I know she kind of pulls me back because she's not the natural entrepreneur, but you guys have such similar personalities. What does that look like? Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's a challenge because I would say because we're so type A and because we're both competitive and we both love to see what we're made of when we came together, not just in partnership, but in business, it like escalated everything. Oh, man. <laughs> like, oh, dope. You're going to do that? I'm going to do that. Okay, you're going to build that? I'm going to build that. It's like, <laughs> and that's why we grew so quickly mm -hmm. because we had this person next to us that was like, kept pushing the needle forward and we're like, yeah, okay, I'm going to push the needle forward. Oh, then I'm going to do it. And that escalation was great and really worked for us, I would say, quite well until we had our son. <laughs> and then, until. <laughs> and then we were screwed. Um, and and, and it, that really changed everything, I would say. Yeah. And, and I would say at that point, like, really for me, I'll speak for myself and he can speak for himself, but for me, I recognized that I really had to just restructure and reformat my business to make it work for my new values and my new priorities. And it, a lot had to change and I had to be willing and mm. continue continuously have to be willing to let go of this idea of like the old kind of competitive me that wants to keep up and keep going and like lean on that momentum where now I'm building momentum with my son in a different mm. way. So it doesn't mean I still can't have the business, but I get to restructure the business to really meet my values first instead of 
meeting the, the old value of like, let's see how big I can build this thing, how quickly, how much impact can I make. Now it's like, let's see how this can contribute to more time and more presence with my family, you know? Yeah. I love that because I, I mean, that was something that changed a lot for me. Obviously we weren't, we didn't have a business at least I wasn't in the business when we had our first child. Um, and for me, that part of my life was actually a really important piece for figuring out that I actually did want to be a part of that. So yes. becoming a mom and losing a little bit of who I was and having to refigure out what that looked like kind of helped me grow to the point where I was actually ready to step into entrepreneurship. Whereas before I was just doing the background work, you know, I was like, oh, I'll just, I'll just be the admin assistant and, and the manager and, and do all these things that I know how to do, but I'm not fully invested. Like it's not a big deal because I'm, yeah. this is just a job. It was just a job for me. Whereas yeah. when we stepped into the online space and the online business, I really had to get clear on what does my role look like? What do I want out of this? And that actually helped me in turn figure out more about myself as an individual yeah and what I wanted my life to look like and how I wanted to show up for him, for the kids and for our business, because I wasn't doing that before. And I think yeah. becoming a parent, like always has all these crazy, interesting things that you learn about yourself because you just are kind of going along in life and it's happening and then bam, you know, yeah. you're this whoa. tiny human. And it's like, whoa, <laughs> the world is a new place. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because I think, you know, women, we have our own journey that we go through, but I know he went through, such an interesting shift as well once Kingston came. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that what I want to comment on is, uh, or sort of touch on, is, hmm, you know what? I just blinked. <laughs> <laughs> I was going one place and then you... Like, oh, I, threw, did, I threw a, yeah. a wrench. Oh, that's what I wanted to say. <laughs> Just going back to your question about how it works between us. Now, you hit the nail on the head. We're both two A-type personalities. And just in a regular relationship, that would cause friction. Mm -hmm. um, and then you add business and then add a child. And not just business, but working together where you are like the front end of the company and the back end of the company, um, which is startup phase. Uh, which is what we were in, and Alexi's a Virgo. Her birthday was yesterday. Yay! Happy ah, birthday! Happy birthday. birthday. <laughs> um, and I'm a Leo. And if you look those two signs up, they're like the opposite of each other. <laughs> one, one is big picture, no details. Fuck, like screw it, let's go, let's just jump and find out what happens. And the other one is visionary, big picture, all details, like structure, structure, structure. And so. In the beginning, um, we found it was magical, and it's still magical, and there was spaces where there was resentment building up. Yeah. And, you know, for anybody listening who's in a position where you haven't defined the roles in your relationship slash business, um, that is a semi-important thing to really take note of. And not try to fit uh, a square peg into a round hole. And what I mean by that is like, you know, both of us are visionaries. Both of us are um, integrators and imp implementers. However, we do it completely different ways. And it's very easy in a relationship to go, well, you're doing it wrong. Because the right way is this. And and. We, we had that come up and, you know, based on results where we are, first of all, I'm madly in love with this woman and, um, you know, anybody who's ever been around this can tell you and she'll tell you, I smack her butt and I, mean, I don't know how many times I even rubbed it last night, like, <laughs> like probably 360 times, like just waking up to hurt her butt. Like, um, <laughs> we, the, oh my God. the attraction, the, 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 love the respect is if not more now that i saw her pop a human mm -hmm. out of her vagina um than it ever has been and so we're we're still in it we're still figuring it out like everybody else is however um 
what I notice about our relationship that is different than a lot of other relationships is, is that um, because we don't pretend to know each other, there's still lots of mystery mm. um, and respect within that mystery. And of course, we fight like everybody else does, not as much. And we, we're learning to let it go, especially because we know that our son is not necessarily listening to what we say right now. He's picking up energetically. And so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and you know, I love that point you just said, um, you know, about not pretending to know each other and know everything about each other. Because when I look back, one of the points where I think we got stuck was that we had like, we met the first day of college. So we had like four years of just work together every day. Like we slept together every night, you know, and you, you really couldn't separate us. And then even when we graduated, we were still we living together. together. Yeah. Like, so we, we really knew a ton about each other. And yeah. then if I look back at kind of where, where things probably started to kind of separate was I think when we got comfortable and we felt like we knew everything about each other. Mm-hmm. And then what happened during that time was, well, we started some businesses and we had kids and what ended up happening was instead of like continuing to be curious and ask those questions, especially because we were both changing, mm-hmm. we got yeah. to a point where I like, you know, I looked over at one point and I was like, I really don't know you as well as I think I used to, you yeah. know, because we've both grown. And once we started just saying like, I want to know you more, like it, it sounds very corny, right? No, but once it, it was like, I, I want to understand you more, like what are your thoughts? And once we started asking each other just a lot of these random questions, it was when we got to the point where we like rediscovered more about each other and why we loved each other. And at least for me, that was a huge, Mm -hmm. you know, and I think for most people, we kind of go through life and we miss out on reconnecting and being continuously curious and learning about each other. Yeah. We used to have the the bedtime chats, you know, like when you get into bed and you're sitting there and you just, all the thoughts of the day come out and you just, you just talk and you take these weird side tangents about (laughs) topics you would have never expected to be talking about right before you're going to bed. But we used to do that all the time. And, you know, then it's that, that saying like, Oh, life happened. The business has happened. And we just, we started going to bed at different times or, you know, he was traveling for work. So I didn't see him every night and everything just got kind of lost. And I think it was the same for me. Like I didn't feel I didn't feel like if I asked you a question that the answer I had in my head would necessarily be the answer that you gave me sometimes. So Yeah, and that's such an important thing. Like, and this is a two part thing. It's like couples need to make sure A, that they're maintaining some sort of sovereignty where they're really taking care of themselves and like doing their own thing and having their own interests and making sure they're creating that interdependent connection and shared memories with their partner so that the two can play together, right? Like if we're always together and we're always doing stuff together, there's not much newness and freshness we can bring in because sure I can share my perspective, but we were both there, Mm -hmm. you know, but if he takes a course and he comes back and he tells me all about it, then it's like he's infusing that, that newness and he's getting to explore new sides of himself. And I think it's so important. And that's something that we're constantly making sure that we're taking care of ourselves and our sovereignty and our interests, Mm -hmm. bringing those interests and like, weaving that into our puzzle together and then making sure we're creating really great shared memories together as well. Yeah. So you, you talked about the importance of roles and like we saw the same thing, like in, in, as you have roles as spouses, you have roles in the business. And then obviously you guys added on roles of parents. How did you guys go about figuring out what roles you each play and what did that look like, especially when you add a child into the mix? Mm-hmm. I think in the beginning, we just wrote down everything that we did and then kind of just was like, all right, you'd be really good at that. You'd be, we, we did the ones that we wanted first, mm-hmm. and then we had to, like, delegate the ones that nobody wanted, mm-hmm. but we didn't <laughs> have support for yet. And we're like, all right, fine, I'll do that one, but then you have to do that one. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, there's, like, things like, and, you know, what's funny is those things were attached to some of our core wounds. Mm-hmm. Right? So, like, um, I would shy away from um, ad- admin stuff for multiple reasons, but the, because I was dyslexic as a child, because school was painful and the worst thing you could ever put me in, um, anything that has to do with a bunch of details and uh, ad- admin seemed like torture to me. And um, what was easy for me was asking and connecting 
and doing those things. And for her, I, you know, we'd have these moments where we're like, oh, you know, so-and-so is an influencer that would be great to share the bridge with people. And she'd be like, no, <laughs> no, I'm not asking anyone for anything. I'm super independent. I do everything. <laughs> and, and so then I would end up reaching out to people and doing that thing. And then I would end up burying myself in admin work because that was like easy for me. You know, so it's, it was interesting because we noticed that and then we, we stuck to those roles at first. Yeah. And when we really wanted to stretch ourselves, we said, all right, like, let me try this. Let me take this one on mm -hmm. now. Like, I feel ready to step into that. Oh, I feel ready to step into this. Okay, great. And we really worked together to kind of expand our own repertoire and then we also made more money, so then we were Just able to outsource. <laughs> <laughs> delegate, that, delegate, delegate, delegate. Like, like delegation, especially especially for things that could cause like rifts in our relationship, like cleaning the house. It's like just little things. It's like, I don't want to do it. You don't want to do it. Perfect. Let's pay someone to do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like that is worth every penny to just outsource things that, that feel really heavy for both of you. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. Well, I was going to say, it's, it's funny because I, you know, one of the things like um, we had uh, Carrie and Demir on, which you guys know, and they yeah. did a similar thing with their roles. They called what, it the auction, the roles auction. Nice. Yeah. But, but when I look back at what we did, like basically I took all the things I liked. I took the things I didn't like and gave them to Ariana. And then, you know, as typical entrepreneur fashion, it was just like, when something's not working, let's try to push through it. And yeah. I love what you just said about realizing that and then taking a step back. And what we've realized now is that when something's not working, instead of just like hard headed, like push through it, taking a step back and exploring, like, why is that that I'm avoiding this? And ultimately, is this something that one of us should do or does it just make sense to delegate it? And yeah. since we've done that, we started shifting roles a lot more into more of what we're naturally good at and want to do. And I mean, that's been like a game changer. I think, and not just in us. the businesses either, yeah. in the personal life as well, because it was, you know, sort of, I'm the detailed person. So oftentimes I am the one handling the entire household and having to make sure the kids get to doctor's appointments and, you know, whatever needs to happen, that was all on me. But of course, then I would get to a point where I'm trying to handle things in the business and in the household. And it was just, it was too much. So taking little pieces and saying, you know, how can we shift how we're doing this or how can we change the process of how we're doing this so that it's not such a constant drain on your energy all the time. And then also, how can I, how can I put some of that responsibility back on him? Because even though he's not good at the details, you know, this is, this is our lives. You know, we have to be present. We sometimes have to do things we don't enjoy doing. So there are times now where, you know, he's responsible for the kids and I don't have to plan out their outfits and get their lunch ready and do all of the things because this is a role that we're sharing, but it's, you know, it's still part of our personality. So it's how can we shift and change these little pieces that don't make us super uncomfortable and are sort of helping us grow a little bit in some of those areas that we weren't always good at. I think oh, that's changed a lot for both of us. That's huge. That's huge. And I think a lot of people don't realize how much they are doing or are not doing. And Gottman actually talks about this in his book where, you know, a lot of people have this like inflated idea of how much they're actually doing mm -hmm. in particular areas. So he has like an itemized list of like household tasks. And just like we would in business, how we would do like a weekly audit of every single task we're doing before we hire and outsource, we get to do that at home too and really get clear like, oh, you know, I have this story. My husband's not doing anything around the house. But, oh, he takes out the garbage and the recycling. He, you know, he's cleaning the, the yard. He's doing the dishes after I cook. You know, like really actually seeing, like, what is my wife or my husband doing? What am I not doing? Where can I help supplement this person if they're feeling, you know, especially like during launch time? Like, you guys know, during launch time, mm -hmm. the business is the focus. And he launches, I launch, we launch together at different times. And knowing when he's in a launch, and when I'm in a launch, we help to take some of the stress off of the other person so that they can focus on that. And that's like, you got to be flexible as well. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I think that we've talked about sort of the, the business and life scenario as like a season and there yeah. are different times when one season is going to be at the forefront and the others are at the, at the back or what was it? A band. It was a band analogy too. Mm -hmm. We had lots of analogies in this series. It's been amazing. I want to go back and log them all, mm -hmm. but it's, you know, it is being flexible. It's knowing that there are times when the business is going to come first. It's going to be a priority Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's for that short period of time and you, you're yeah. going to go hard, you're going to do the work. And then afterwards it's like, okay, now life is back in the forefront yeah. and you can take care of things, but it's yeah. also setting up kind of how your life is so that it works in tandem with those launches and not, you know, hopefully not having crazy things going on in your life while you're having a launch, but in having a spouse and people around you who are there to support you through it, I think is huge because it's so tough to go through some of that on your own. And I know we have a lot of entrepreneurs that do have, you know, a spouse that isn't in the business with them. And it's like, even if they don't understand what you do, you know, you have to talk to them and let them know that you need their support during this specific time in your business, because it could change what your lives look like, you know, based on if the launch goes well. But yeah. if they don't know that, they're just going to look and be like, oh, they're putting all this time into the business and they're coming home cranky and angry and what is going <laughs> on, you know? Totally. There was something I heard, I forget where I heard it, but um, for people in that scenario, when it's like one spouse is an entrepreneur and the other's either at home or just a regular nine to five, if they kind of hang the hat up and they're done, the really cool thing that they do is after the launch, they schedule in time together as like a reward for, let's say, the business launch and, and all that effort, but also a reward for the spouse for saying, thank you for taking care of the house or whatever you took care of while I was focused. And it gives both of you something to look forward to and, and still creates that, that team unity. Like, all right, we got this. Let's do this so we can get that trip at the end. I of love it. that. I thought that was such a great idea because so many spouses do feel left out, especially mm -hmm. when they don't understand all the moving parts and components of it. And kids. <laughs> and yeah. kids feel left out. So, yeah. I was gonna say, so, so speaking of that, in the seasons, um, our kids are now three and six, so they're a little bit older. You guys are now into the season where you guys might have heard in the background, sleep <laughs> training, right? So. Yes. As He's you guys, not by himself, by the way. He's with our next <laughs> Yeah, he'll be okay. He'll cry himself <laughs> to sleep. <laughs> so, so as you guys are in this now, like, how have things changed, and how have you guys been able to adapt to now that new responsibility? In addition to everything else that's going on. Mm. Um. Well, uh, there's a few things. One, you know, when you have a child, or a child has you. Um, <laughs> there's a love that you just didn't know existed. It's beyond anything that has ever existed in our existence. And, and that love is an extra gear. Like I was talking to a friend who, whose um, fiance is uh, pregnant. And I said, bro, you're going to see her step into a place that you didn't know she had within her. And you're going to do the same thing in a different way. And so uh, for me, Kingston, our son, has been the ultimate game changer. He, I already had purpose in my life that took it to a whole other level. And so, you know, even as we speak, right, I'm in the middle of a launch. Um, I've done almost 42 calls in the last five days, maybe less than that. Um, and... You know, I'm in the garage, I'm in the car, I'm ev everywhere I can be to do these calls, and I'm tired. I'm freaking tired. And I know that when we do, you know, some of this front-end work, and, and we, we put ourselves out there, we really go for it, that it pays off, you know, on the back end. It pays off years to come. And relationships especially new relationships uh, w with a baby tend to rock everything. I mean, it tends to just come and tornado your relationship. And um, we definitely had some ups and some downs in that process. And I'm just really proud of us and remembering to savor all of this because it will pass sooner than probably we think. You know, he was just tiny. Like, a few months ago and now he's like a solid dude who like hits his head <laughs> on the ground like crawls everywhere like, and climbs on yeah. stuff 
and like um, you know we'll never get this chance again so it's it's been beautiful it's been beautiful it's been amazing we went to Burning Man and we had uh, we had it set to be there for like five days five six days yeah six days and it was like day three we were like up in our RV while everybody else is partying. It's like three in the morning. Looking at videos of our son. Like smiling and giggling. And we're like, Ooh. we're ready to go home. Yeah. <laughs> so we're early to come back just because we missed him. Yeah. And, and honestly, this season of life right now feels like just a, a deepening and a redirection for both of us. Mm -hmm. I think it's really like while he's in this like precious stage and we're also planning on baby number two as soon as possible yeah. we're really setting our lives up to be the container for mm -hmm. two kids an awesome relationship freedom adventure all the things so a lot had to shift in our businesses a lot had to shift within our context of our relationship mm -hmm. and how we spend time with him like even sleep training was a part of that mm -hmm. you know like we were co-sleeping with him and doing an attachment parenting style and we recognized like He's not getting any sleep. We're not getting any sleep. Something has to shift. Let's We're not getting any sex either. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Something Be real, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, you know, we did the thing that, that scared us. We didn't want to sleep train, and we still yeah. don't. Like, this is happening, and it's, like, yeah, hearing killing that, us. Like, uh -huh. mm -hmm. Oh, I remember. I used to have to wear headphones because I couldn't. Oh. It's, like, torture. I know it's, like, torture for him. It's torture for me, too, and, and for Preston. But it's all a part of, of this redirection and a deepening of our, our plan for us as a family, as yeah. a community, mm -hmm. um, as a mission out in the world. Like it, it all touches everything. So we need to make sure that we're just being really highly intentional with every space and every moment that we have. And I think that's hitting all aspects. You know, even, mm -hmm. even, even Kingston's playing that game with us. So. <laughs> You know, I, I love just kind of hearing all of that. And what stands out to me from our discussion here is I think two things. One is awareness. So as we go through all those changes, being aware of them, and then two, being intentional and designing things the way we want them. And I think you guys have done a really good job of kind of highlighting how beneficial having those two things are as you go through all these changes and all these seasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, gosh. I love this so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, I mean, out of everything that we kind of talked about today and just your experiences and the things that you guys have gone through, what is the one thing you would love for everyone listening to take away today? Hmm. I think that, and this is across the board just for life, I would want someone to take away that there's a lot of gray area and that there is no right way to do anything. Um, and enjoy the journey. Like all of this is life. And when we get out of the idea that life is always roses and flowers and you know, happy all the time and, and just get present to the present, then it can become um, something more beautiful and creative. Mm. You know, I think that we rage against the machine because we think that we should have it all figured out and we're all trying to land. We're all trying to get there. We're trying to finally fix the thing and land. The business is fixed. The relationship is fixed. We have the perfect kid. We have the perfect house. Everything's perfect. And that just will never freaking happen. That, mm. that is the opposite of life. Life is always creating. And some of that creation isn't always pretty, but it's always perfect. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I, I love that too. I definitely second that. Um, and I'll add to that, what's really alive for me right now is just being highly intentional with everything I'm up to. You know, why am I doing the work I'm doing? Mm. What is the ultimate purpose? Like, why did I get into this in the first place? And making sure I'm really centered on that why. Yeah. Not just for the mission and the output and the end result that it creates and generates in the world, but for the end result that it creates and generates selfishly for me. You know, like I got into business for myself for a very particular reason at a very young age, freedom and time, right? And, and at some point I recognized that the hustle 
created more of a prison and more of a slavery than a nine to five job would have. Mm -hmm. And that's when I got to get really intentional and say, oh, wait, the whole reason I created this was to generate freedom and time to my top values and create this output and mission in the world. I've got to get those top two values back for myself and therefore I've got to restructure and redesign things. So I think a lot of people get so caught up in that chase and in that hustle and in the more and more and more and bigger and different and all of those things, which is fine, but don't lose sight of why you started this in the first place. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Both great, great takeaways. And I think um, everyone is just going to get so much out of this episode. Thank you guys so much for coming on. Where is the best place for people to reach out to you or, or to find you on social and, and kind of keep track of what you guys are doing? Yeah, I'm Alexi Panos all over the web. So at Alexi Panos, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, AlexiPanos.com. Preston Smiles all over the web <laughs> at Preston Smiles. All right. Well, you guys make it easy for people to find you. That's for sure. <laughs> One last right. thing to think about. <laughs> it has been another amazing, amazing episode here on the podcast today. And we are your hosts and lifestyle builders, Tom and Ariana. We want to give a huge thank you to you, Lexi and Preston, for coming on and just sharing so much of your story and your experiences with everyone. So thank you guys so much for coming on the show today. Of course. Sure. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. And for everyone listening, watching, I want you guys to remember that it's your life, your business, your way. We'll see you next time. Bye. Hey, we hope you enjoyed this episode. If you know another entrepreneur who may benefit from hearing this show, we would so appreciate you being a good friend and sharing it with them. And just a reminder, as a special offer during this super special Couples and Entrepreneurship Month, We'd like to invite you to get started with your first month of Lifestyle Builders for only $1. Sign up now at tomandariana.com slash lbcouples with the promo code lbcouples. Are you a Lifestyle Builders podcast fan? We'd love to hear from you. Head on over to tomandariana.com slash iTunes and leave us a review.